Hello there. Ten months ago, I did a video on Nova, and I thought it'd be quite good to do an update, just to see how I feel about it now, because that first video was, I'd used it a little kick in the tires, and it was kind of first impressions. And I think at the end of that video, I said, I don't know if I'll carry on using this, it's all very nice, but will I carry on using it? Well, evidently, I am. And it's been ten months, I've used it on some real projects, I know it a little bit better, and well, I'm still using it. So I thought I'd go over some of the good, the bad, and some general thoughts about it now that I've spent some more time here. So first thing is Nova's kind of like a, a, a world of contrasts, right? There's certain things it does very, very, very well, and there's other areas where it's kind of deficient. And I think the elephant in the room is Visual Studio Code, right? Which is where I've spent a lot of time for years and years and years, it's what I've used. And switching from that to this, there's things you miss, but that being said, one is written by Microsoft and is free, whereas this is a like a paid product made by a handful of people in Portland, Oregon. There's a very different sort of scale there. Um, one is much older than the other, so Visual Studio Code is many years old, whereas Nova's pretty young. It's two and a something years, two and a bit years old. It came out in 2020. Um, so with all that considered, overall, it's a really great piece of software, but there's some things you might miss. That's kind of like the, the headline of this video. So without further ado, let's look at some of the good stuff and then maybe we'll talk about some of the bad stuff afterwards. So good thing number one is, I mean, it's one of the big ones and maybe the biggest USP besides speed um, is it's really pretty. <laughs> and I hate saying that because it makes you sound like such a Mac fanboy, but it's, it's true. Like there's some value there. If something is polished and attractive as a piece of software, it makes it more pleasant to use. And um, I think it might be a thing to an extent with, with Mac software or Mac native software versus general software is where there's a set of standards and this expectation around Mac software to be that bit more polished in general and a little bit slicker and smoother. Um, and that's, that's on show here. Panic, the company who make this, are like exemplars of that native slick Mac OS experience. And this is no different. It's very smooth, it's very attractive, and everything it has built in is put together with quite a lot of care. I'm not saying there's no bugs, but there's, you know, every, there's care, thought, and attention put into the user experience with this application, which is very refreshing when uh, Visual Studio Code can be quite janky at times. And um, lots of little areas of the application have little polish and tweaks. And like what I'm saying as well is all this being said is I use Windows most of my time. 75% of my time, I'm not doing development. And on those times, I'm using Windows. If I'm doing development or personal stuff, I do that all on Mac OS because I do prefer it. But I'm not like a Mac fanboy who knows nothing about Windows and oh, you don't, you know, all you know is that. No, I, I do know the alternatives. I'm just saying that the degree of polish on show here is, is fantastic. So that that comes up kind of all over the application. So starting some really simpler things like splits, right? You can split every application, every code editor, so you can split into multiple panes, right? And little things like when you drag out a file, you get drop previews, which I just really like. It's It's just a little thing. It's not like revolutionary. It's just a nice feature and it feels right and you get used to where the zones are and it feels very predictable and very well put together. On the same similar topic to that is how it manages maximizing splits. So if you have two splits inside Visual Studio Code or like IntelliJ style editors or probably some others, you can normally do a thing where you can maximize one of these sides. And especially when you're working on a laptop like I am now, sometimes you want to focus on one of these files over the other one. So Normally, if you go into Visual Studio Code, you can press a keyboard shortcut, which will kind of do this. It will do 90-odd percent of the window and leave a little sliver of the other one over here, which I find really distracting. So the way they do it in Nova is you can just click this button here, which I've got mapped to a keyboard shortcut, and it just fills out the entire width with one of the splits, just takes over, and you can just toggle it on and off, and it's very quick. I love that. It's really nice. Um, the splits go on forever as well. The splitting's really nice. And other little features like you've got this little button here to directly create a split if you don't know what sort of file you want. So you can just click this button, add a terminal, add a remote terminal, like an inline preview, that kind of thing. Having a built-in inline preview is really nice as well. It's not the best one in the entire world, but it's pretty good. It's just nice. It's just smooth. I like it. Um, and that, that goes everywhere. Like, if you look at the mini-map here, um, it does... Your mini map, your mini map, your mini map things. But also, if you hover over individual elements, you get to find out what it is. So, what kind of element that is inside the list, which is kind of useful. It's good. These features are good. I like them. It's just 
polish. And um, even further into that, things like it's got a diff tool. So this is the sort of the, the point two is there's lots of really nice things built in. There are extensions elsewhere. So a lot of the core stuff that you normally have a known go-to extension for uh, inside like VS Code world, some of that stuff's just built in. Like a diff tool, it's got a really nice diff. So if we, click, I'm got, I haven't got a commit. Let's just uh, pick another file. So if you have two commits, you can look at your latest, or you can go through the versions if you've got one. Let's just actually make. We'll make some in a second. We'll look at it again. But let's just do. Let's just do that now. Let's make a little, a little commit because that's another thing. It's got a built-in Git client, which is very nice. Yeah, let's do that. So let's just quickly stage all of this. Do an initial commit. Hello, commit that, and we'll make a change in this file here. We'll change locale lang to, I don't know, cake. This isn't my file, this is just something I pulled off GitHub. Let's commit that too, so whatever. Hello again. Oh, can't type, I can't type, there we go. Commit, then I have to go back into our split. Cannot find module, of course you can't, it's not a real project. Yeah, we can have an inline diff between the two. So we've got a line here of changes. So if we come here to our oh, current version, uh, let's commit, let's change it again. Let's go to potato. There we go. And we get a nice inline diff. This is really cool. We can check through its commit history and choose which get which diff we want to compare against, or we can simply go into the sidebar and we can dip this against a new file. Let's grab why not app.typescript. So let's just drag that into this window here. And you can compare um, various, let's do that. There we go. You can compare different files. It's really nice. And it's built in. It's a really slick diff tool. It reminds me a lot of Kaleidoscope, which is a standalone Mac application, which has recently become incredibly expensive. In fact, it costs more than this um, for a diff tool. And it's great, and you've got it built in. Another thing, like I said before, the Git bar, where are you? Anyway, the, the Git sidebar, you've got your history. You've got a list of branches, all this kind of stuff, and it's all just here. And I've got a keyboard shortcut map, so I can just go straight to the um, the Git window, and I just commit things as I go. As well as like if I add a new line here, and I write some words, there we go. I get my inline commit. You know, this is uncommitted thing, or you know, click it. I can discard the change. This is all pretty standard stuff, but it all looks pretty. It all works very, very well. Um, other things you've got as well as things like it stores SSH keys by default, which is lovely. You have a place in the um, in the settings where you can just store any SSH keys you've got, any, like, if you've got a bunch of FTPs, if you still use FTP for stuff. I use FTP occasionally. You've got a little FTP client, so you can set a destination, and you can do, like, a, a publish upload sort of workflow, where you can add, a, you know, a, a place and just view remote or work remotely on, on a project as well, which is all very nice. It's really cool. It's really, really cool. And these are things that are just built in out of the box. And these things generally are um, extensions of varying quality and degree of integration inside something like Visual Studio Code. You just get for free here. If you compare this to like something from JetBrains, um, JetBrains stuff costs a lot more than this. And also, yeah, they've got a lot of the same features, but you get a degree of that JetBrains-y nice integration, but on a lighter weight application. Which brings me to my next good point, which is speed. So it's very speedy and it's pretty good on resources. Um, I did a test earlier today to make sure I wasn't lying about this where I had a big 150 meg, like uh, was it like JSON file full of whatever from some university just to compare speeds. It loads and it loads quickly. By default, it turns off parsing, which is great. You turn it on, you get sort of symbol definitions and stuff all the way through your file and it runs and it runs quickly. And on a file that large, it does use some memory but you compare it to VS Code, it's kind of night and day. Where because VS Code is kind of like a, a big memory hog because it's it's uh, it's an Electron app, right? So you have this main code thing running, which is like a few hundred meg. But then you've got lists of these helper applications that run alongside it for Electron, and basically I think it sits at about two gig on my system half the time. Whereas this, like, I think you open it up and it starts off using like I don't know. 90 meg 100 meg and then you open a big file it obviously uses more memory but it's predictable and it runs really quickly it's very hard to make it crash it's a really stable for the most part stable application that can handle big files and it doesn't chew up your resources which again is super valuable 
Um, again, comparing it to the sort of JetBrains thing, which they are big, heavy, clever IDEs. This is the fluidity of something like Sublime Text or you know Visual Studio Code. It's I actually did the same test also with VS Code and uh, Sublime. And I had to do that. I had to re-download Sublime. I haven't used it in a while because of this. And um, this was using less, well, it was using more memory, but it was running faster than Sublime. It's a really quick application because it's native. That also has an awful lot of value. So those are some of the things that, that really kick ass. There's other little things all over the place, like things like I really like rainbow dividers between stuff. That's built in. Um, that's a pure preference thing. Uh, you know, there's, there's loads of these little features all over the place which make it a really nice place to be. Even when you sort of drag a file into or you replace a file externally, it brings up a nice window saying, which file do you want to replace? And the little, like, not, well, it's a standard window, but it's just presented more nicely, if that makes sense. The presentation is very, very nice. The terminal is very nice. Obviously, you've got a terminal every app nowadays. It's all very good. Um, but here's where we get into the negatives. So I think what I was saying the positives are, the, the thing is, it's very polished. The things built in are very, very, very nice. Um, where we get into the negatives is the big one, in fact, the only one really is extensions. So if we go into the extension library, and that's not to say that it's empty. Oh, hello, spoilers. There's a lot. There are a lot of extensions, but obviously compared to some of VS Code, there's way, way fewer just because one's open source and has five years on this. Under the hood, this has some technologies that Visual Studio Code doesn't in terms of extensions, which is quite good. For example, it uses TreeSitter, which is kind of like a um, syntax highlighting library, which is very, very fast and very, very context aware. That's brilliant. VS Code doesn't have it. This does, but also this supports um, VS Code language servers, which means you can port VS Code add-ons into um, Nova, which is awesome. Um, a lot of people have been doing that. So all the core stuff is actually here, right? So if you can think of a language, generally speaking, if you look at my left-hand side here with my extensions, it's also worth noting that this doesn't come, like it doesn't have pay as much of a price for having extensions running compared to VS Code. You can have quite a few running, because I've got quite a few here. But you can see there's some really common stuff here. I've got Alpine JS, I've got Astro, I've got things with .env. Emmet, for some reason, is... It's, a, it's technically first party, it's, it's sponsored by Panic, but Emmet's actually a plugin. I've got Prettier, I've got something for Laravel, I've got a bunch of popular themes like Monokai, I've got Savelle, I've got Tailwind, I've even got a thing for opening files up in Tower, which is like a dedicated Git client, Vue XML, YAML, TypeScript, all this kind of stuff. And um, the quality is generally pretty high. There's normally a pretty good quality version of every plugin for every major language. If you go into something a bit more obscure, then you might start to find little gaps or there's little utility things, then they might not necessarily exist. There might not always be a one-to-one -one between it. And that's kind of the biggest uh, failing, I guess. Not failing, it's not even a failing. It's a younger application that's only on Mac and costs money. Under those circumstances, it's actually in really good shape, but you're gonna be missing some extensions and it's uh, or, or sometimes they will be, I don't know, like not as up to date as the one on VS Code, and there are fewer. So things like I've been playing with HTMX recently. HTMX is really really cool. There is no HTMX extension for Nova right now. I'm tempted to build crappy on myself. I've actually built a couple of extensions already, not very good, but you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, like the lack of extensions isn't ideal and in a way there's kind of nothing that Nova does that VS Code can't do. So I think the main reason why I'd use this over VS Code, there's a few little tiny niggly things as well that are kind of better in VS Code like the way it handles predictions inside completions. This isn't my code so I don't really know, oh you get inline git things. Uh, I don't really know, uh, let's just do Let's do, like, oh, Emmet won't count, but the, trust me, the completions aren't quite as nice as in VS Code. Um, but yeah, mostly it's about extensions, and, but that's such a big thing now. It might be a big turnoff for a lot of people. And uh, another thing that's another big issue with Nova, which um, sort of this video is kind of part of trying to rectify this thing, is a lack of community, where a lot of people think of just getting on and working, but 
the outreach or the communication from Panic isn't amazing. There's not really a public place to be. There's actually a Discord that's not like uh, official, but there is a Discord. It's got about 30 people on it. I'll put a link in the description. So if you want to join that, that'd be really good if you do use Nova because these people aren't talking and um, they have a dev forum, which is not very active, to be honest, um, because they haven't really put as much energy, I think, into building a community as they could do. I think a lot of people came over from Coda, which is their previous application, which is something I've never really used. Um, and I think they're kind of sort of, I think they're being, I think they're approaching it with my business hat on. I think they're approaching it in quite a sensible way where they've got an uphill battle against something like Visual Studio Code, missing a load of features that they have. There's some under the hood stuff that doesn't work as well, as well in terms of how extensions work. That's not bad. It could be a lot better. And it's like, they could be doing more to entice more people. But I think they're being sensible because they have to, you know, it's a paid application. You have to pay each year to get updates. The updates come very, very frequently uh, and they're big updates and they always add new features and it's, it's pretty good. But they do need to do a better job of speaking to people. Um, and I know they're being cagey because they have to let it live on, live on its own two feet kind of thing. And I think they might increase that bounce rate, I guess, if they get loads of people into this ecosystem and being like, oh, where's thing one thing i expected that you don't have this one tiny little extension that i use every day there's no equivalent for and i don't want to write it um those people might get get bounced away that sucks but they they could do some more to increase that sense of community i think and uh but overall that's kind of the thing is everything it does out of the box it does pretty pretty well right um and hopefully the extensions come there are some missing like i said every major language is pretty much there that i hit the other little thing where it doesn't exist yet but generally people do make it um and that's kind of most of my thoughts really is there anything else i've missed i don't know oh um settings are cool settings are really awesome so little things like again going back to polish Navigating through themes is pretty fun. You've got a bunch of dock icons and fun stuff like this. Storing your um, your SSH keys in here and be able to sync them between the machines is really, really cool. I wish I had setting sync between multiple instances, which it doesn't. It only syncs SSH keys and like server setups and stuff. But, um, which again, is something Visual Studio Code has. Also, I think if things like Copilot are important to you, a big thing that actually kind of turned me off a little bit from VS Code is I have used, I used did a month of um, Copilot. I thought it kind of sucked. To be honest, it was more annoying than it was useful. It is useful occasionally, but considering how prevalent it becomes when you install it, it annoyed the hell out of me. But if that's important to you, there's a semi-working Copilot extension, which I think someone's working on, but that doesn't exist here either. Anyway, fun stuff like, look how you change themes. You click a button, it just smoothly transitions between themes it's all very smooth and slick and oh what's this oh what's this oh my own themes yeah so <laughs> two of the I've, I've, written, I've written a couple of extensions it's a minor plug for uh the theme that i'm running if you like it you can get it if you've got nova <laughs> it's called ashikai um and it comes in four flavors one's standard one's brown because who doesn't love a bit of brown that sounds weird one's quite contrasty and the other one is purple it's called Erpel because it's kind of purple and I like the purple one a lot and I use it most of the time. I'll put a link in the description if you want to get it. It's fun. I'm I'm actively adding stuff to it. It's It looks like this. It's nice. <laughs> you should get it. Anyway, if you like this video, then download a trial, I guess. Give it a go. Um, give it a bit, a bit, a bit of just a, a bit of a, a bit of a, uh, uh, <laughs> give it, give it some benefit of the doubt. It has most of the things you want, but uh, again, that is quite you know personal things, and uh, yeah. yeah, I think it's ninety nine dollars. I got this on sale when I bought it first time round, so I got it at half price. I think they'll do another sale sooner rather than later, uh, and I think it's fifty dollars a year to keep updates in the grand scheme of things. It is uh, pretty good value. It's not very expensive, really. $50 a year. And you get a lot of stuff. You get a lot of features all the time. And if you just do the basic stuff like diff and git and use not like pretty standard languages and you want a fast editor, 
it's as pretty much as good as it gets if you're on a Mac, which you probably should be if you're doing development. I'm going to stop talking now and uh, have a lovely day.